black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like at the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge to empire and reality temple. Reality temple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like at the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge to empire and reality temple. Look out here, these boys that got killed, lying there asleep, like a rabbit was sleeping in his bed, not paying no attention to the dog. And here come the dog eating them up, but a dog won't grab a rabbit when he's lying sleeping in his bed. He'll make a noise to make him jump up, because I have hunted with dogs after rabbits in the south, and that, uh, rabbit dog of mine, he'd go up there, he'd catch a rabbit, squatting down in his bed on the little grass, and with his ears lying down on his butt, neck, the dog won't jump right on him like that. He'd take his feet and pat the grass and make a little noise, and the rabbit jump up, and he run. Then he takes out after him. He'd give him a chance for his life. But look what these devils did for these boys out there. Men lying there asleep. He wasn't waking. He sent a blast of bullets in the man while he was sleeping. He had him anyway. Why didn't he just tell him, well, I got the cover. You want to take it without fighting? That would have been just but he was such a coward, scared of him. So the devil blast the man's life out of him. He didn't, uh, dead man never saw it in him. Didn't know what he looked like. He died before he could be wicked. He didn't know what killed him. See what kind of people you live among? And that you praise them up and wish you could stay on with them forever? Look what you are done. I don't say these men uh, would not have gotten killed if we had helped them. But that would have helped us from seeing another thing like that. Why didn't you and your followers then, Mr. Muhammad, take revenge for such? The reason I did not take no part in it because they had asked me out before they got killed. I spoke about them. Forever they got into this death killing stuff. They came to my house. When I spoke about them in our paper, he asked me not to write no more about them. He said, just keep your, your paper and don't put us in it. And so I said, Okay, and I didn't even t until today. So God told me to let them go ahead and do it. And I let them and they about wiped out. I knew this group was coming, so I went on and I taken myself in my house and put my mouth in my own paper and said nothing about this. Because they didn't appreciate it. They don't appreciate it even today. But tomorrow they will. <laughs> I said, brothers and sisters, some of our people are so dumb that 
God himself can't help us. That's right. They are so dumb to the knowledge of good that they won't accept God because they don't know God. And they consider God is just something that will talk. But they will soon know it's coming to pass. And I say to you, oh brothers, fly to Allah for refuge in this day and time. There is so many people that don't like to come and listen to Muhammad because he said there is no heaven or hell for us after we die. That when we die, that's the end of us. I said, brother, if there was an end coming back to us, there was another chance. I would be a greater believer in that than you. Because that would convince me that I am preaching wrong. I will come back. And I would like to have a chance if there is anything like coming back to come back. But if you put the cold, chilly hands of death on me now, and then wake me up and warm them up again, I would say that I would not feel like getting up. I would be afraid something else is going to happen. <laughs> so I said, once death put me to sleep, let me remain asleep. That I'm not conscious that I'm asleep. And I don't want to get conscious that I'm asleep if i got to come back again to that same way. Like the Bible teaches you, and there's a lot of Christian ministers take it just further, that God raised ladders up out of the grave. Given life again, well then why did ladders have to die again? But God is more intelligent than that. He would not have raised Lazarus up and then let him die again, the physical death. He would have been mistreating Lazarus. But that's the misunderstanding of the preacher. The death there don't mean a physical death. He declared that himself when he told to come to the grave. And that ladder was dead, he said, he's not dead, he's just asleep. Meaning that he's not physically dead. Show me where you have lain. And he went and looked at Lazarus, still declaring he's not dead. And then he called on his Lord, not to try to try to God, he was well aware that God knew what he was going. He said, in words, I'm not trying to tempt you, but for the sake of these that stand by, the disbelievers, that you answer my prayer for what I'm asking for, because I'm not trying. I know you can raise it. But for the sake of these disbelievers, Jews, I said, I could change that today. For the sake of disbelieving black people. <laughs> Let him rise. I want to thank you for your honor and respect to my wife's dead body. I never seen no person body honored as you did my wife. You greatly honored. I was told that there was somewhat around five hundred cars. 
out in that parade. I do think that I couldn't ask you for more. Respect and honor that you give to my wife's body. I hope and pray for God that the honor will always be remembered that you give her. This is all we can do for a dead body. It is to respect it for what it did for us when it was alive. come by the will of Allah, and we shall quickly forget it, because we are also on the same road. Not a one of us is off on a road that won't lead to the same destination. So let us forget that, prepare for ourselves that we will not die unless we die a Muslim. <laughs> it is not mentioned Muslim in the Bible, but it means the same. He says, there the prayer, let me die the death of the righteous. We glory in Allah to guide us even through death that we show the world that we die the death of the righteous. This you find the prophets, some of them in the Bible praying for the same thing. They prayed for the same thing, excuse my English, that they wanted to die the death of the righteous, and they did do so, though some of them were uh, maimed and murdered, but yet they died a righteous person in their mind, and hot according to God. They could not have died in a better under the hand of an enemy who violently destroyed some of them. <clears throat> but in this day and time, you can die the death of the righteous if you live a righteous life. A righteous life, Allah will let you die the death of the righteous. What is meant here, you are not supposed to suffer. A Muslim told me once, of a Muslim dying in the mosque over in Asia. He said he died on his knees saying his prayers. And I said, that's a mighty good death. And I was told about many righteous people how easily Allah take them out of life and they are gone to the life of unknown or has never been known to be in a life there. So what I'm saying to you, let us pray to Allah and do righteousness and try and die the death of the righteous. I Thank you for your listening here this afternoon, and I pray that each and every one of you will not die unless you are Muslim. Everybody wants to die easy. This is true, that's nature. We don't want to know it, because that's the end of us. 
So be like that, be righteous. I thank you for your listening here this afternoon. Now, I'm going to do this myself. I want all of you that is here who have some disbelief about Islam, stand up and tell me. No one. I want any one of you who have not understood the teachings of Islam that I have been teaching here and my helper, Minister Shai, and others who are helping me here throughout the country, if there is something that is said that you don't understand, will you stand? I mean about Islam. Will you stand and tell me so I can correct you? No one. I thank you. Now again, I would like that you know this to be true of our teaching, and you have Bible bear your witness, bear us witness. Heard, heard. Get out of the name of white people. Heard, heard, and acclaim the name of Allah, your people. When we say Allah, many times we are referring to the Supreme One among us. Allah. His name is Allah, the Supreme Being. We call him Supreme because no other being is his equal. We don't mean that he is a spook now. There is no such thing as a God that has joy in us that is something other than us. That he's some kind of a farm or something. No. All the God ever was for us was meat, bone, blood. That's what they were. Never was no farm God. And there never will be. God could not get joy out of us if he was not one of us. <coughs> He's just supreme in wisdom and have power to will of thee, and it come to pass. Let thy will be done. Will. He just wills the thing, it comes to pass. And that is conferred upon the righteous. If you love Allah, obey Allah, and his messengers, prophets, to do the will of him that is sent, for them to teach you. You also could will a thing, it, it will come to pass. But don't will a thing and then uh, suspicion whether it will come to pass or not. Then you are disbelieving in your own prayer to God and disbelieving in God whom that you are direct in your prayer to. Whatever you ask him in prayer, believe he heard it and it will come to pass if it's not vain things. Then it will come to pass. I asked the law something that maybe you don't know. I saw my wife was uh, in a condition and it is disease, the thing that she had was a cancer. And it had been with her ever since he came to us. He told my wife in my presence, Sister, you have a sick stomach. This sick stomach traveled with my wife up until the day she died. She knew these things and I knew them. I did not want to tell our sons and daughters the condition that our mother and our wife was in. 
my wife was in. There they made with grief themselves. I know it for over 30 years. But I kept it to myself. I know what was wrong. God had told her, and she knew it. But there was no cue for it in the way that she was so. I asked the Lord to bless my wife to come home and die. I said, don't let her die out there in the hospital of the devil, lest he laugh. I said, oh, he said, the prophet brought her to us to heal. Why did not he go to the master for Lord Muhammad if he thought that he was God to get her to heal? So I asked Allah, knowing Allah in person, to take away from out of that hospital and let me bring her here home and die. I said, because the devil will be bound to laugh at you and me. And this thing, I kept asking him for three or four times, and I felt like that he would do so, and he did do so. And I told the doctors that I'd rather see her die at home. So they admitted they were, that I was right, and that they would find some way to get her out to my house. I said, yes, uh, she'll come out. And I said, I will let her die right here in this house. I said, because I don't want to be laughed at by the devil, and I don't want the devil to try to make more of the power of our God. But there is things in that line that must not be ignorant. God is not going to do no miracle unless it's necessary for us in the way of death. Because one day we're going to die anyway. As the Holy One teaches us, Allah did not design that no man should live forever. So don't be thinking that. He says in the soul of Quanto, some of us wish that we had a life of a thousand years. Well, that's the dread of death. But if it pleases Allah, we will die very easy. My father did no one know when he had passed. No struggle, no nothing at all, until the, uh, the nurse examined him and found him that I had just left the hospital out. out. I was like, out. And I know what he had told me. I wasn't expecting to live. He talked to me very sane. Before I left, he told me all what he had heard the doctor say. So I left to take my mother away, fearing that she'd break down if I tell her what he had said about him would be passing away from us, nine most any time. So I came home before I got settled in a seat good. Telephone rang and told me my father had just passed. I wasn't surprised. So we retired and we began to make preparation for his burial. And he didn't make one struggle to say, This is the death that the whole Quran is teaching you. Die not unless you're Muslim. So that you don't feel the stain of death. It's a kind of uh, a uh, visitor. We don't want to never visit us. And if he visits us, don't let us know you are here. Just take us away. This is what the Holy One teaches you. 
that you pray for. Pray that, our, that you die the death of the Muslims, meaning the righteous. Some are in their good and listening ordinance. I have words I would like to say to you on many of these things. And when I think that you can take it, I'm going to tell you. But I will wait on you. The people is waiting for something now. They don't want that slavery stuff. Telling them that they got to die to go to heaven. They want some of this heaven they see. Not the heaven that they are not sure of. If he dies, he can't come back and tell you whether you told him a lie or the truth. <laughs> so I said, brothers, let us get together on what we see and not what we are promised that we will see <laughs> after we are dead. There is no man never lived and died that came back. When he's dead for sure, go call him all you want to. Go lie down in the grave with him. He don't answer. One or two words can stop that kind of teaching. Brother, show me one that uh, was once dead and went back to the earth and, and he's now living. Show him to me. Jesus rose from the dead. Tell him to show him to you. <laughs> what is meant when the scholars and scientists said Jesus rose from the dead? It means a man with the ideal and the teachings that Jesus wanted to give us, but he was before time, and he died. It means... <laughs> so we want to say to you that there is no such thing. Nobody has been put down in the earth and someone said, dust to dust, he returned to that which we're taking him from. He come out of the earth, now we return him to the earth. No one has ever seen one come out of the grave. You can say you dream something like that, but dreams is not always true. If Jesus came back, none of us have met him yet. <laughs> and uh, all the prophets of old, they all died. And the creator of this heaven and earth that we live in, he died. We don't meet, we don't meet with him. We have not met him. No, sir. I want to teach you these things that you have misunderstood. There's no such thing as a, a human or no flesh or no life. Let it be whatever life it may be. After it dies, don't come back. Yes, don't come. So uh, the white man taught you this, but you didn't ever know what he meant by this. He means, he meant this, that you are dead, nigga, now. But you can live again, because you are God's people, and he's coming after you one day, and take you away from me. And then you will come alive in the knowledge of what I have done in keeping you like you are. <laughs> Bye.
was the first one to be baptized. Right. That's right. That's right, dear Papa. He got just what he preached. That's right. right. And you look at me. As I should moan and go on. Yes, come on. I don't moan over a man that actually was taking you to uh, go on to. That's right, right, no. right. I want you saved. Yes, sir. And today I represent a, a savior for you and me. Yes, sir. You can't win like that. No. According to the scripture, our battle is to be false. And won by God Himself. You cannot arm yourself here in the eyes of the white man. How can you do it? You cannot protect yourself in your community with the necessity of life. He could tie you up at once. Elijah is not that foolish. I know. What he can do for you. I realize on Allah. Who have fed himself. Leave it to me. I will take care of you. I will save you. I will save the whole 22 million. If they will believe.
homemade bomb group to go around and destroy their own property. It didn't belong to us. It was their property. White people's property. You would feel happy to 
put his scars and meet in places of Elijah Muhammad and his followers and even their lives and his life. I'm afraid that you are seeking your own doom. But then 
Lenin, officers of Rama, and some of our business plates to protect my life and property, I want to thank you for it. I have great respect for you doing so. But in the outburst of leftover murder, Elijah and his followers and bombed their meeting place, we can't sit down. We have to try and protect ourselves too. Everything that he could think of 
to displace me. Right. Right. He fought it all. Right. I sit here in my house and listen to it. There never lived a man in America that has been plundered in him, worse than I. That's right. By a man for a whole year. He was given the freedom a whole year. He didn't stop slandering me here. He went everywhere that he asked. Pardon me, that's not it. No. He went everywhere that he asked. Spending his money and other people's money to try to make enemies for me. He goes to Africa. He goes to East. He goes to Mac. Talk to the chief I mailed that mess. He gives me. But he failed to get to Master Barat Muhammad. This you know. There's a few of you would like to try and destroy what Elijah has brought from God to his people for their salvation. Many of you like to do so. Who is Malcolm that you are trying to lift up to the world? What has he done for you? I taught him all he ever knew. <laughs> Destroy me today. 
fuck. Leave us alone. We will leave you alone. All this is that we find that you don't like us, we leave you alone. These do the same by us. Leave us go. If you don't like us, leave us alone. We are absolute. Now, today, looking at something that could have been made one of the most glorious things. If Malcolm had died a natural death while he was with me and my followers, we would have given him one of the most glorious deaths. We would have stood at his and would have prayed over it with tears of grief okay. in our eyes for the departure of one that have worked with us and lived with us and his communication was sweet with us, we would not have standing room around his grave tomorrow. Only for one for big demand. The great department stand even beside the grave of a hypocrite. We can't even say a good word for his wife because she was with him. Right. And she still has not declared herself teaching his best best teaching. Right. If she had declared that she was forced to remain with him due to the support of her children. This would have been very well. We could have stood here and spoke good words for her. We could go and get her home for her. We could take care of her children. But no! She said nothing. Probably, but Elijah Muhammad could, should be killed. It is an outright injustice. I am here in Chicago last Sunday. The husband was killed. Now, yet I should be killed for his death. You are afraid to go. Fire at reality, too.